This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, March 22. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Joint Select Committee of both houses established. Senators make an appeal for an end to U.S. embargo against Cuba, and IMF commends Grenada for addressing structural impediments to private sector growth. Those were the headlines. Details are next. Changing and saving the world in style. Join the Indian Cultural Organization of Grenada Inc. at the Mon Rouge Park Grand Dance in front of KFC on Saturday, March 26th. In celebration of Pagua Holly, the Festival of Colors. Celebration starts at 5 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. Chutney dancers and singers from Trinidad. Local artists, Steve Giudo, song Changing and Saving the World in Style. Tangler, a group from St. Mark's for Indian Drum and Dantel. Local dancers performing a spring dance to welcome the beginning of the spring season. Tassa Group, children entertainment and many more surprises. Admission free. Lots of Indian food on sale. Do you really want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express, parcels, and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Welcome back, viewers. Labour representative in the Senate, Chester Humphrey, has recommended the establishment of a joint select committee of both houses to discuss matters of national importance. He did so as he supported the Status of Children Bill 2010, which was brought before the Senate on Tuesday. Maybe this is an opportunity for a joint committee, um, which will then give the Attorney General the opportunity to be present and to take part in the proceedings and discussions backward and forward because all of the contributions have been objectively, um, have been objectively very positive. In other words, I have not detected any politicking on this issue. I think what, what we are witnessing here is the, is the coming together of good minds, great minds on an issue which we all agree must be addressed. We all support it, but there are some little hiccups here and there. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to have a joint select committee of both houses where the legal minds and all of the intellectual discerning powers that has been briefly exhibited here could be brought to bear in the presence of the draftsmen or the draft persons, to be more um, terminologically correct, um, will have an opportunity to intercourse with the different members of the houses to get their views and in that way the final product when it comes out can be a, a joint product capturing the best of the minds that make up both houses. Senator Humphrey also suggested that debate on the status of Children Bill 2010 be suspended to allow for the formation of the Joint Select Committee of both houses to consider the bill in all aspects. The committee members are Senators George Prime, Ann Peters, Dwight Hosford and Gregory Bowen. Senator Humphrey also suggested that once the committee is set up, members of different bodies in society can address it on pertinent matters. Once the committee is set up, then um, the church or religious community could be invited to address the committee so they can prepare their memoranda, come forward, raise their concerns and address the committee. The committee can also seek um, expert and professional opinion. So maybe the chief medical officer or somebody who specializes in 
that branch of, 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 of medical research having to do with genealogy and all that kind of stuff from the St. George's University could become a professional advisor to the committee. In other words, the committee can so constitute itself that all of the different disciplines that we would require to filter and make sure we have a good bit of legislation could be brought to bear. The bill was tabled by Leader of Government Business, Senator George Prime. Its primary purpose is to reform existing legislation dating back to 1991 and to remove all legal impediments of children born out of wedlock. Senator Prime says it makes several substantive improvements to the existing act. In the present legislation, Act 1991, in that act there are no adequate provisions to deal with DNA testing, for example. The lawyers have made a field day of that. Further, no regulations relating to the very same DNA testing in the act as now contemplated. What is also lacking in that act, Madam President, is that the act does not deal with specific rights of a putative father in relation to the child itself. This is a major deficiency from our standpoint. So the bill now seeks to adequately address these issues that are confronting us as a people. And in keeping with modern times, what are some of the major improvements to this new bill? What are they? One, as stated in the existing Status of Children Act, this act only provided, first and foremost, specifically, for blood tests as a procedure for determining the parentage of the child. That is without more. That is all that the present act, as we have now in the book, says. This new bill seeks, however, to expand on the provisions dealing with blood tests. First of all, in the establishment of the paternity, so as to include, relating to DNA, testing and other medical or scientific tests, namely parent testing procedures, which are now capable of amounting to evidence of paternity. The bill also provides for rights of a father upon the establishment of paternity, as well as the recognition of rights and interest in real and personal property in cases where paternity has been established. Meanwhile, opposition Senator Dwight Hosford commended the bill and described it as a practical piece of legislation that should provide for a smooth and efficient determination of paternity cases that are troublesome. But at the same time, he suggests that there are areas that must be carefully considered. I noticed that there is a section 5, subsection 1G, that talks about the, presum the presumption existing where somebody would have consistently or implicitly um, held out that he would have been the father. That kind of circumstance is difficult to fix a, a presumption in. It is not the same thing as cohabiting partners, where two people live together and a child is born. As a logical corollary, you can make a presumption there. But how does one fix a determination, a presumption, sorry, that Paternity exists when somebody consistently or implicitly over time holds out that they are the father. It seems to me that the determination of consistent and implicit holding out to be a father has to be a judicial one because it will be controversial. So it's not, in my view, an appropriate um, scenario for a presumption. And I promise you, we'll have difficulties there. Members of the Senate say they will send a message to the government appealing for renewed efforts at CARICOM to call for an end to the U.S. economic blockade against Cuba. A resolution of solidarity with Cuba was tabled by Senator Chester Humphrey. He says the lifting of the blockade will correct historical injustices. This is such a time for dealing with a matter that has affected a Caribbean people a fraternal people, a people by their conduct, not just by their words, 
have proven that they are a people deserving of our empathy, our sympathy, and our support. A people whose government, irrespective of whether or not we share its ideological construct or not, but who has shown an element or aspects of humanism and humanity unmatched by a few other governments in the world. In other news, the International Monetary Fund has commended Grenada for addressing some of the structural impediments to private sector growth. The IMF mission, led by Ms. Nita Thacker, has just concluded its second review of the government's economic program, supported by the IMF's extended credit facility, approved in April 2010. The world body says, with growth in Grenada expected to be in the range of 1 to 1 1.5% in 2011, the authorities continue to face challenging circumstances. They noted growth in some sectors like tourism and construction and expect greater output in the agriculture industry. Ms. Stacker says when compared to other countries in the OECS, Grenada's growth is at midway, meaning it's not the fastest growing country in the OECS, nor is it the least. The team, headed by Ms. Thacker, along with Minister for Finance, the Honorable Nazim Burke, and other finance officials, held a media briefing on Tuesday afternoon. Minister Burke says the findings from the IMF report confirm government's commitment to strong economic management. We are heartened to know that you, find your, you, you were able to find that Grenada has um, been making its best efforts to, um, to consolidate the economy, to, to stabilize and to consolidate our fiscal situation, and that um, we are meeting most of the targets that have been agreed to under the extended credit facility. This, of course, um, confirms government's commitment to strong economic management of the national economy, something that we've spoken about repeatedly because we believe that that is the prerequisite for growth and sustained growth, and that is why we continue to pay attention to it and uh, reaffirm our commitment to it. We want to say also that um, we are happy that you pointed to uh, the signs of recovery, as nascent as they might be, as, as, as small and as indicative only as they might be. We welcome that because um, uh, it indicates as well that the government is doing its best to cope with this crisis and in the face of the crisis to try to make those necessary adjustments that would help us to, uh, to grow and to be able to um, meet our targets that we've set for ourselves. Asked about Grenada's capability to subsidize food and fuel costs, Ms. Thacker says it's not within government's reach or any other country to do so at this time. She says subsidies should be granted to a targeted group of people that is in need, like the poor and vulnerable. I don't think there's any government that has room to subsidize uh, food and fuel price increases for the entire population. Uh, having said that, um, you know, targeted cash transfers or a targeted subsidy to the poor and vulnerable groups, those who are really hurting, uh, the government has to find trade-offs, you know, to, uh, government usually tries and finds trade-offs and, uh, and does that. And, you know, the IMF has always been supportive of targeted subsidies, targeted assistance to the poor and vulnerable groups. Uh, but uh, you know we don't subscribe to the uh, to the to you know to the club that says that because prices are rising, uh, you know they should be uh, the government should subsidize that because it introduces market distortions. You know if if a if a commodity is expensive, then you know people need to reduce the demand for that. And subsidizing, uh, you know, subsidizing products doesn't solve the problem. It only pushes the problem forward. So yes, as long as you know, as long as the uh, the you know assistance is targeted to very well-defined poor and vulnerable groups, um, we think we think that's what the government has in mind, and that is something that you know the IMF has always supported. But no, not across the across the board subsidies to everybody. We don't support that. 
Minister Burke says government is discussing a number of possibilities in which they can subsidize some of the costs. He says a deadline has not been set for doing so, but it is on their agenda. One area the IMF found disapproval with is unpaid, unpaid claims. Ms. Taka says it was higher than what they projected. Minister Burke says the area remains a challenge for government. We probably have, uh, what was it, about $20 million over 60 days. Mm -hmm. uh, just over $20 million over 60 days. Yeah. Um, but, but that is the challenge that you face. Now, uh, every time, if we say we will bring our unpaid claims down to $10 million, and then somebody comes and they say, look, um, gas prices have gone up. We want you to subsidize it. So take the money and subsidize the gas because gas prices have gone up then it means that the money that we would have used to pay off the claims, to bring the unpaid claims down from 20 million to 10 million, we now use to subsidize the gas or to avoid the, the VAT on some items. So every time people call for additional concessions and subsidies, it reduces the government's capacity to satisfy the unpaid claims. There's no magic to it. So um, it's, it's absolutely important that people understand that there's a limited pool of money and if we say we are not going to, uh, we need more concessions, do not collect the VAT that you would normally collect on this item or this item or this item, give us a concession here, give us a concession there, take off the VAT on construction material, take off the VAT on hotel occupancy, whatever it is, it is, it is reducing government's take and therefore government's capacity to meet its debt obligations. Going back to Tuesday's meeting of the Senate, an island-wide campaign will begin in Grenada on April 1, targeting the more than 14,000 young people under the age of 18 who are not yet in possession of a birth certificate. In September last year, UNICEF, the UN Fund for Population and Development, and the Government of Grenada as well as other regional governments held a workshop on best practices of civil registration. As a follow-up to the workshop, the Ministry of Health embarked on a program with UNICEF to look at the status of registration of children here. Health Minister Senator Ann Peters says when they looked at birth records in Grenada, it was revealed that there were more than 14,837 young people under the age of 18 who do not have a birth certificate. She told a meeting of the Senate on Tuesday that this is, there is a need to address this anomaly. The um, scheme of things as regards registration is that the law indicates that parents have up to one year to register their child, of course, at no cost. However, if you need to get a birth certificate afterwards, there is a fee of $5. And if you need to have the father's name included on the certificate, you will have to, put, you will have to pay an additional $12. We also re re discovered that there are a number of children carrying their father's um, names without the proper legal um, certification. So come April 1st, we are going to be embarking on an island-wide campaign to ensure that we are able to capture all of those 14,837 young people who are currently without a birth certificate. In other news from the Senate, the Minister for Caracol and P.D. Martinique Affairs, Senator George Prime, says they have completed the first draft of the Caracol and P.D. Martinique County Council Bill, and Cabinet has agreed that the legislation review process can begin next week. There are seemingly 12 sections to this legislation. And the main section, in fact, if you ask me what is the highlight of it, is the section that deals, section 11, with setting up a separate authority for PT Martinique. In the same way that we believe this authority is important for Caracol, and of course the entire state, PT Martinique not only by virtue of its own separation from the mainland and indeed its sister island, Caracol by sea, it is contemplated in this legislation that P.T. Martinique should have its separate authority, distinct from the council itself, even though members of P.T. Martinique will sit on the council. So that, to me, is a very important part of this legislation. Equally important, Madam President, is the provision, Section 8, that deals with the liaison between the council and central government. I mean. Clearly, what is anticipated is that there are always going to be disputes 
between central government on the one hand and local council on the other. The mechanism is thereby provided in this legislation for resolution of those conflicts, even without it getting to the courts. Fish is being sold at $5 per pound, but that is at the Grenville Fish Market. The price has been reduced because of an abundance of the stock. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Aaron Francois, says there are a number of different types of fish available at the Grenville Market. So you can get um, kingfish, um, dolphin, and so on. So, so we're encouraging persons. Um, you can... You can approach Grenville and, and, and get some, some fish because there is a lot there and the price is, is good. Five dollars. You cannot get it better in Grenada than that. So we encourage you. Unlike it, uh, the, 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 what we call the bonito, uh, used to be sold for, for a lower price than the others. They are saying that all the species, they are selling for five dollars now. So it's an attractive market. There has been an increase in food production, uh, production, especially in these staple crops like yam and dashin. Chief Agriculture Officer Daniel Lewis says this is good news for the sector. Recently, I was interfacing with some of the people that work with the banana moko eradication program, and they tell me all over the place we've seen um, a lot of um, dashin root crops springing up at the place. Let me tell you, you should take... If you look at what has been happening, even sweet potato, if you look at what has been happening, for example... Farmers all over the place, vegetables, Let me, for example, on a daily basis, you would see so many people coming with tomatoes, because quite apart, the weather had been extremely good this year too. Um, you see tomatoes that normally would sell high quality around this time of the year for about six, seven dollars a pound. This was just been sold for a dollar, two fifty, two dollars a pound. Pumpkin, dashing, I mean, there is a surge in production. So much so that sometimes from the ministry standpoint, we normally um, get quite concerned when we have so much production and you know what happens to the marketing situation given our small population. So from our perspective, we have seen a surge in production in many of the food staples on the island, many. In fact, some of the farmers who do not normally go to the market with the vehicles and things, I'm seeing they doing that because they just have to get additional outlet for the production. Mr. Francois and Mr. Lewis spoke during a media briefing on Tuesday morning. On another matter, the coastal fishery project in Guav is 40% complete. Government is anticipating that the entire project will be completed by the end of the year. And that project is approximately 40% uh, complete. Um, we hope that by the end of the year that project will be completed. And, and the, the contractors have indicated to us that the project is on schedule. The Royal Grenada Police Force has re-emphasized its zero-tolerance policy to the use of offensive weapons in schools, even as students are becoming more creative with the types of weapons they are carrying with them. Inspector Peter Mason says parents have to play a greater role in monitoring and controlling the action of their children. In the past, the students have been found with screwdrivers, knives and scissors in their possession. Now they are actually walking with what is referred to as a butcher knife and they are walking with them to sports events at the National Stadium. Inspector Mason says once caught, they will be dealt with. You can see it is something already been used. Uh, some of the uh, ILDs have already um, come off of it. There is um, dent on it that been used before. So the child probably took it home, or uh, wherever they had to be home, and brought it to the sports. And it, because of our alertness, we, uh, we were able to get it from him. Now this one, this one, it appears to be a pen. Yeah, I yes? thought it was a pen. It I was a pen. A pen. Yeah. But look at this. Look at this, a big nail, uh, that's a six inch nail. A six inch nail, with, um, sh uh, they, they file it down and put a bayonet um, hook in it, and the, and the child has it. In school, the child was searching the school. The principal of the school searched the child and got it on him. Now, of what use is that to a child in the school? And the way it was, it, it is, it is been brought into the school in a uh, try to hide it, indicated that the child has some kind of intention. So again, this child is being charged for having in his possession an offensive weapon. 
He is concerned that in many instances, parents or guardians are not living up to their expectations as adults, and he reiterates that the responsibility for training children rests with the home. We have to focus on the home, and what we have found is that the children who are given the most problems at the schools, their parents are not attending PTAs. The teachers are giving the children notes to bring home to the parents. I don't know whether or not the child is giving the parent the, the, the note to, go, to bring to the parent, but the parent is not at, um, showing up at the school to, to find out what's the problem. A child has been suspended, bring a parent home, bring a parent in the school on Friday, the child will come to the school without the parent. And even if the teacher to tells the child, do not come on the school compound, the child still feels he has the right to go on the school compound without, his parent, without the parent and the, and the teacher tell the, the child to bring it, his or her parents come, and the child will not bring the parents come. I'm not saying, I'm not sure, I'm not saying that they didn't give the parent information, but it, the, the point is that the, the parent is not going to the school. The challenge now, according to Mason, is that many students, some as young as 13, are going to the National Stadium with alcoholic beverages like rum, whiskey and vodka in plastic bottles. He warned that the adults selling these products to minors will be dealt with and he urged parents to pay attention to what their children are doing since their education should be the main focus at this time. The parent can set a standard, like um, set standard in terms of the, the, the academic work, set standards in terms of when they should do their homework, set standards in terms of what they should do the, when they should do their home, the, the home chores, what time they should get back home from school, set standards in terms of letting them know that there are particular behavior that they, that they will not accept from the child and whenever those behaviors have been exhibited, the child should be punished. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. is the second annual Peter Phillips Schools Drum Corps competition in collaboration with Maximalt, Friday, April 1st at the National Stadium starting at 2 in the afternoon. Ten secondary schools will be vying to take the title from the 2010 champs St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School. Be there to witness Carriacou Combined, Presentation Brothers College, the Anglican High School, McDonald College, Mocha Secondary, Westerhall Secondary, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, Happy Hill Secondary, St. John's Christian Secondary School put on their best display to be crowned 2011 champs. Admission $5 without uniform, $3 with uniform. Is the second Peter Phillips Schools Drum Corps competition at the National Stadium, Friday, April 1st, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Come support your school and drink a Maximold. Start your morning with the Government Information Service. Tune in to GIS Spice Morning, Mondays through Fridays, starting 6.45 a.m. Spice up and brighten your morning with an informative television show with guests from a broad cross-section of society. You too can be a part of our Spice Morning. Call us at 440-2061 or email gisgrenada at yahoo.com. GIS TV Channel 12, your best choice for educational and entertaining television. Continuing the news, more than 20 primary and secondary schools participated in Nawasa's Water Conservation March on Tuesday in observance of World Water Day. The students chanted water conservation slogans and held placards sensitizing onlookers as they marched from the Port Highway to the National Stadium. Minister with Responsibility for Public Utilities, the Honorable Joseph Gilbert, and ministry officials also participated in the walk. Minister Gilbert said water conservation is critical and he congratulated all those involved in the drive to conserve water. Last year around this time you, 
we were actually experiencing, experiencing a severe drought. And um, I think we, the people have been sen 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 sensitized to the extent that they now see the issue of conservation as being critical. Um, Nawasa has, has taken the lead, but um, the young leaders too in the various schools have also shown the initiative, great initiative, in um, choosing water as part of the agenda for the activities for this year. And so I want to congratulate all the schools who have taken, that have taken part um, in, in the march itself today and also those schools who have young leaders that were involved in the, the, the water week, as it were, which started sometime last week and will conclude tomorrow, um, Wednesday the, tw the 23rd. Water is important in controlling the spread of fires. Corporal Garvin Alexander of the Fire Department reiterated the need to continue the education process to avoid wastage due to useless fires. The students in particular need to pay attention to the de depletion of our ozone layer. They need to, to re be reminded, constantly be reminded of the need, for example, the usage of water, the number, the millions of gallons of water as it relates to the extinguishment of bushfires. If you, if you were to look back at the year 2010, where we had a total of 471 bushfires, 620 fires overall, which the department had to respond to, and we had somewhere in the vicinity of 8 to 9 million gallons of water being used. Uh, those waters, most of it were treated water, which could have been channeled to our pipes and used for basic drinking, to wash clothes, for the flush using of our toilets, and so forth. So I'm basically here to drive that message home to the students so that they can be one of the links in the chain of fire prevention and safety. Manager of Nawasa, Mr. Christopher Husband, says the participation of the schools has been encouraging. He noted that although the dry season seems a bit delayed, the company is taking the necessary precautions to face any challenges that may lie ahead. It's certainly easier than last year. Uh, of course, in the last few weeks, you would have noticed the dry season effect showing itself, and, and we do expect to have a dry season. We are able to deal with the conditions that we see ahead of us are uh, forecasted for this year, but we're dealing with the climate, which as we know is a forecast, and we can never um, be totally sure until we actually get to the point. So we are still being cautious. We are still... Um, taking the necessary precautions to ensure that even if the dry season comes and is delayed beyond the normal time, that we are in a position to, to supply. But things definitely are a lot easier than we had last year, and we would certainly hope and pray it continues that way. Nawasa's observation of World Water Day included free connection on Tuesday free reconnection on Tuesday. The Water Conservation March was held under the theme Water for Cities Responding to the Urban Challenge. Grenadian youth will bring their concerns about education and other issues of national importance to Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas at an event scheduled for Wednesday, March 23 in St. Patrick. Prime Minister Thomas, who is also the MP for St. Patrick East, and the Youth Empowerment and Sports Minister Patrick Simmons will participate in a national youth forum at the River Sally Government School. The forum, which begins at 4 p.m., is organized by the Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Sports. The ministry describes it as an opportunity for youth to interact with ministers and government officials on areas of education, economic and social development, and to have a voice in the governing process. As part of Wednesday's exercise, two St. Patrick youth will be part of the group of panelists that will include Honorable Thomas and Mr. Simmons. The Prime Minister will share on the topic, youth and their role in the governance process. Minister Simmons will speak on the new apprenticeship program and its benefits to the youth of the parish. The Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Sports has issued an invitation to all youth of River Sally and surrounding communities to attend the National Youth Forum and be involved in sharing and gathering information that will assist in the development of the nation. Agriculture officials are attempting to set the record straight regarding the distribution of fertilizer. They want farmers to know that it will only be done on Wednesdays. Recently, the ministry got reports from angry farmers that they showed up to a distribution point on Friday last only to be turned away. 
the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Aaron Francois, apologized for the situation during a media briefing on Tuesday and urged farmers to seek information from the ministry only. I know you understand the demand. A lot of people would be rushing the fertilizer. But our real target is so that we want bona fide farmers to be able to access, to make, take advantage of that concession and to make use of the fertilizer. We don't want persons who are not farmers to come and buy the fertilizer and to go and profit here from it. And so we have put in that measure and we're asking for farmers' cooperation in that regard um, so that we can ensure that the fertilizer um, um, benefit our farmers. Um, and as Minister said, just to reiterate, we are only going to distribute fertilizer on Wednesdays. Um, we, we, we heard of some instances where farmers went in, 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 in Grenville last week, Friday. Um, we want to urge them, don't listen to no other person. The ministry's decision is only on Wednesdays at all our points, the fertilizer will be distributed. That's news. Sports is up next. The Ministry of Labor wishes to advise persons who have applied for the seasonal agricultural farm workers program of a meeting to be held at the Seamen and Waterfront Workers Union building on the Carinage on Friday, March 25th at 10 o'clock in the morning. The Eastern Caribbean Liaison Service will be visiting Grenada to provide an orientation for one day only, Friday, March 25th at 10 o'clock in the morning. There'll be video presentations highlighting life on the Canadian farms. Please make every effort to attend and be on time. A message from the Ministry of Labour. It's where the action is each and every Tuesday evening from 8pm. Join sports enthusiasts, those who play, organise and follow the game as they discuss the issues that matter most in sports. Relive the action of sports and give your views. So let's make it easy. Sports Forum on GIS TV each and every Tuesday from 8pm. West Indies boosted by the return of Kema Roach and Chris Gale for their quarterfinal clash with Pakistan in the ICC Cricket World Cup in Asia. Barbados combined colleges and campuses and England Lions co-wins in the latest round of matches in the regional four-day cricket tournament. The national football and volleyball school teams making early preparations for the 2011 Winter Island Secondary School Games in Dominica in July-August. This is another GI Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. There were wins for Barbados, combined colleges and campuses, CCC and Lions, England Lions, in the latest round of matches in the 2011 West Indies four day cricket tournament. Barbados chalked up their first win of the season, beating the Leeward Islands by six wickets. Former West Indies fast bowler Pedro Collins took a hat trick as the Leeward Islands were dismissed for 82 in the second innings. Scores were Leeward Islands 277 and 82, Barbados 251 and 109 for 4. Combined colleges and campuses CCC, meanwhile, chalked up their third win of the competition, beating Ghana by 8 runs. To the victory target of 199, Ghana was dismissed for 191. Scores were CCC 251 and 155, Ghana 207 and 191. England Lions, meanwhile, continued their good showing in the regional tournament with a crushing win over the Winter Islands, who they trounced by 258 runs. Set a victory target of 355, the sub-regional team was kitted for just 97. Scores were England Lions 2, 302 and 290 for 8, declared Winter Islands 237 and 97. The other game between Jamaica and Trinidad Tobago Ended in a draw with Jamaica take, taking first innings points. 
Darren Ganga continued his good batting performance with a century 103, while Dennis Ramdeen scored an unbeaten 87 in the second innings. Scores were Jamaica 356 and 255 for five declared, Trinidad Tobago 279 and 210 for four. So after six rounds of matches, the England Lions are out front in the competition on 48 points, Jamaica follow on 39, while Trinidad Tobago, they've got 37. Combined colleges and campuses are 4th on 33, the Rhode Islands 5th on 29, Barbados 6th on 27, the Rhode Islands 7th on 19, and Ghana the seller on 16. And what do you know? Fans are relishing the quarterfinal clash in the World Cup between the West Indies and Pakistan in Dakar on Wednesday. Despite squandering winning positions against England and India, fans are still picking the West Indies team to defeat Pakistan. The former Grenada leg spinner Alistair Bellat says that the West Indies can win if they put the opposition under early pressure. Really and truly, um, I think West Indies have some men at the top of the order, like Pakistan. Um, the pace is pretty okay now, um, both Pakistan and West Indies. I think probably the spinning department might just give Pakistan the edge and probably could be the deciding factor based on what has been happening in, in the competition. Um, but a good start, Pakistan under pressure. They, they seem that team not being able to play under a lot of pressure. And if we could get them under pressure early, I think we could have a very good chance. The ballot was not surprised at the teams making it to the quarterfinals, the eight teams appearing in the quarterfinals. That's the big eight, and uh, from day one I, I thought that was what happened. You know, you had to have a major upset, particularly where there's a competition with a preliminary rounds where everybody played each other. If it's probably knockout to get there, you might find one of the miniatures getting in. But I think where you have all these games, the big guys will survive, and, and that's just what happened. Alistair the Bellot. Well, that's good news for the original team with the return of uh, key players Chris Gale and Kema Roach for the clash against Pakistan in Dakar on Wednesday. Reports from the West Indies camp are that the players have recovered from the injuries which kept them out of the last game against India and will certainly play in the upcoming game. The Swaz Bucklin, Kale, is expected to boost the batting dep department, while Roach will return to lead the bowling attack. Skipper Darren Sami is happy with the return to fitness of the players and says that the West Indies will be going all out to produce a giant killing performance to reach the semi finals. He indicates that they will be looking for a good all round performance, a very good all round display from both bat and ball. Reports out of um, Dakar also indicate that uh, Chandra Paul, who missed the last two games, will play, or could play, in the game against Pakistan. Well, the GIS is of the view that there must be a right balance in the team and as such is uh, hoping that they will play this lineup. Gale, Devon Smith, Darren Bravo, Ramnari Sawan, Kieran Pollard, Darren Sami, Andrew Russell, Devon Thomas, Davinja Bishu, Ravi Rampal and Kema Roach in that batting order. The experiment with Ben has certainly not worked and Bishu should get the nod. West Indies and uh, Wild Gale and Pollard bowl well in the. With Gale and Pollard being able to bowl, the team will have seven bowlers to choose from, which is plenty of resources for the West Indies. Well, the action continues on Thursday with a big clash. There's a clash when host India and defending champions Australia collide. Uh, Australia, they are chasing an unprecedented fourth straight title in the World Cup. In the other quarterfinal matches, South Africa take on New Zealand on Friday, while England meet Sri Lanka in the last quarterfinal game scheduled for Saturday. After sharing the Winter Islands uh, school games in 2009 and losing it to St. Vincent and the Grenadines last year, Grenada is making a concerted effort to regain the title in 2011. Football and uh, volleyball setbacks have forced the country to share, the, share and concede the titles over the last two years. However, preparations for the two disciplines will start earlier than usual in a bid to give Grenada the cutting edge. Football coach Alistair de Ballard says that uh, training will begin this weekend. 
as you know, for the last three years, we have been doing well in the um, in the school games. So this year, what um, what I'm focusing on is to select a team early and um, to really go into that school games and do well. Because over the years, Trevor, to be honest, with you, we have one of the better team, but I just know we just cannot win. And I think one of the main reasons is that we don't um, have enough uh, match preparation. But this year, we want to get um, like when the um, Grenada Volleyball Association having a competition, we'll select a school team to go and participate in that competition. So right now, I'm working on a team for that competition. Well, that's actually um, the volleyball coach, Rafael nanan Buffett. But Alice Tadibola says that uh, they're starting to train the football team this weekend. Really and truly, um, I think West Indies have some men at the top of the order, like Pakistan. Um, the pace is pretty okay now. Um, both Pakistan and West Indies, I think probably the spinning department might just give Pakistan the edge and probably could be the deciding factor based on what has been happening in, in the competition. Um, but a good start, Pakistan under pressure, they, they seen that team not being able to play under a lot of pressure. And if we could get them under pressure early, I think we could have a very good chance. Thank you, Alisa De Bellet. Well, uh, volleyball coach Ravel Braffitt, who believed that uh, the earlier build-up would make a difference when they go after the um, volleyball championship in the Moon Islands tournament. He said that a program has been undertaken to have the players in top condition. Coach Braffitt is confident that the move will pay dividends. As you know, for the last three years, we have been doing well in the, um, in the school games. So this year, what, um, what I'm focusing on is to select a team early and um, to really go into that school games and do well. Because over the years, Trevor, to be honest, with you, we have one of the better teams, but I just know we just cannot win. And I think one of the main reasons is that we don't um, have enough uh, match preparation. But this year, we want to get, um, like when the um, Grenada Volleyball Association having a competition, we'll select a school team to go and participate in that competition. So right now, I'm working on a team for that competition. Volleyball coach Rafael and Baffert. Bradford, meanwhile, says that uh, the sport of volleyball is going places here in Grenada with the high level of play being exhibited by the young players. He described the 2011 championship as a big success. And that last tournament we had there is one of our best tournaments we ever had. And um, really, when you look at the, the competition and the school competing in it, it was really amazing to see the standard of play. And right now, I, could, I am sitting here and I'm feeling really, really happy to see that the, the, the way the state that volleyball is in right now in Grenada, it's on a high. Coach Bradford says that the interest in the sport is at an all-time high. What we're doing now, we, after the last tournament, we select the best set of players from, from, from each school and we are doing a parish, parish based now, right now. So each, each day we're doing a different parish um, teaching volleyball. So there's a volleyball program on and um, what's yes. the feedback like um, in terms of uh, players coming out? Is there lots of interest? Yes, Trevor, there are, there are a lot of interest and um, it was really amazing to see that last week um, I went up to Grenville for the first time because my, my other two coaches has been up there. And I saw some youngsters and they was waiting at the coach and the coach didn't really come on time and they say, um, so you could teach volleyball not knowing that they knew that um, I'm the coach. I said, yeah, sure, I could, I could take. I said, okay, let's, let's make a start. And those little children, they're about 12, 13 years and you could, if you want to see the interest, Trevor, is really, really amazing, honestly speaking. Volleyball coach in the Ministry of Sports, Rafael Nanan Buffett. And finally, the second annual Southern Secondary School the championship takes place this week at the National Stadium. The field events are scheduled for Wednesday and uh, the 23rd of March and the grand final stated for Friday. Eight schools are competing in the event this year with Happy Hill Secondary becoming the latest addition. PBC, JBSS, Anglican High School, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, Wesley College, Westmoreland Secondary, Wester Hall Secondary and Happy Hill Secondary are participating. The action on Fridays from 10 o'clock in the morning with over 50 events scheduled to be competed. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. Twenty-six million girls are born in the Commonwealth. 
Yet far too many don't get the chance to grow into healthy, educated women. Women who can make a positive difference to their own lives and to the lives of others. What if? What if we lived in a world where every mother has access to medical care and her baby has a great chance to be born healthy? What if her baby girl grew up in a safe home with good food, clean water and access to a health clinic? What if she could attend school where she learns important skills, makes friends and plays sports? What if she stayed on at school gaining the respect of her community and could live with the skills and knowledge to earn her own income? What if she knew about HIV and AIDS and could make a decision about her health and relationships? What if she became a young woman who could have expectations about her life and real opportunities to achieve them? What if her country held elections and she had the right to vote and decide her future? What if she was able to get a loan to start her own business? What if her own business thrived and she was able to offer jobs to others in her community, bringing stability and hope? What if the community chose her to represent them as their leader? What if she could change the lives of other girls? The Commonwealth believes this can happen and is working to give women and girls the opportunity to become the agents of change we all need. Women, agents of change. Recapping the main points of the news, Joint Select Committee of both houses established. Senators make appeal for an end to U.S. economic embargo against Cuba, and IMF commends Grenada for addressing structural impediments to private sector growth. That is DGIS News Hour. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing.